Ever since my love for Diablo 2, I've always been a big fan of ARPGs. That's why today for the next Dagger System Accessibility Review, we'll be taking a look at Torchlight 3. I'm Kyle, one hand mostly Abbott, and I'll be taking you through the game, showing off the game's features, settings, and controls, and reviewing it based on auditory, fine motor, and visual scores. So make sure you stay to the end to find out Dagger System's signature review score for Torchlight 3. If this is your first time here, make sure to hit that subscribe button that we can continue to inform players on the accessibility of future games. And if you want to learn more about Dagger System, make sure to visit our website at www.daggersystem.com. Here you can mute master, change the master volume, mute music, and do the same thing with music volume. There is voice chat if you would decide to play the game on multiplayer, but I have turned that off. I don't know if there's a text chat as well. I haven't seen that. I disabled camera shake for this. You can show blood or turn it off. You can turn on to see the profile names of other players. If you decide to play multiplayer, you can show the damage number. So disable click to move allows you to play the game using WASD or the arrow keys. And allow skill retargeting can be helpful if you press the wrong button or skill when attacking enemies. Then you can scale the UI. There's no number, just to, I'm like, I guess this is 50, it's kind of weird. And then there's enable text chat UI, so I guess there is text chat. But there is no text-to-speech or speech-to-text, which is unfortunate for players that use those features. Then, oh, I made it a little bit bigger. And then if you go, and if you like to play your ARPGs on different difficulties, click over here, normal, hard, painful, and ridiculous. So feel free to mix and match and play whatever level you want to play as, whatever feels right for your character and your build. Before we get started on the review, I did play this game on PC with keyboard and mouse. But for controller, I was able to find out that you can pick and choose what skills go to what buttons on the controller. But that's about it for the remapping of a controller. Now, first up on our review, let's take a look at fine motor accessibility. In most ARPGs, the game is pretty accessible, having only have to play it with a mouse or touchpad or whatever device you use to do that. You can also remap the controls with two separate inputs for each control. However, you can remap the escape key, which can be kind of difficult to get in and out of menus because some menus don't have a way to get out of them via the mouse and have to press escape. But if you rebind some of the keys for like skill or inventory and different things like that, you should be okay to be able to get and navigate through all the menus as you play the game. But overall, the game is pretty solid for fine motor accessibility, which is why I give it barrier free or four stars. Let's move on to Torchlight 3's visual accessibility. In this category, the game doesn't have any colorblind options, which for an ARPG can be kind of tough because you may not be able to tell the difference in rarity of different items right off the bat, because it only shows white, green, blue, purple, and amber for the different rarities. Of course, there's a way to tell in your inventory when you cover your mouse over the item, and it tells you the different type of rarity that the item is. But when picking the items up off the ground, it might be hard to discern. Something that Torchlight 3 does really well is it does choreograph the different attacks that bosses do so you know where they're going to hit you and they know if like in a big spell or attack is going to land on the ground and you can move out the way so that's something that's a plus for this game's accessibility unfortunately for visually and auditory impaired players or really any players in general who like to play games with subtitles on torchlight 3 does not offer any subtitles during cutscenes also when you interact with an the npc their chapel will does show up but if you click off or move and accidentally do it then their chat bubble goes away and you'll miss the dialogue by not being able to read it. And by taking all those things into account, I give Torchlight 3's visual accessibility two stars or partially accessible. Lastly, let's take a look at auditory accessibility. The game does offer master and music sliders, which you can mute and turn up and down. When venturing throughout different zones in combat, there are a variety of auditory cues, like if your health is low or if you're standing in poison and different things like that, which definitely help the player step out of those things or use a health potion. And if you're looking at party up with people in multiplayer through the game's voice chat, there is no text-to-speech or speech-to-text. If you're a person that kind of relies on those technologies, just keep that in mind. Without more variety in the volume sliders and no speech-to-text or text-to-speech, I have to give Torchlight 3's auditory accessibility two stars or partially accessible. If any of the previous information in this video helped you decide if you can play Torchlight 3, make sure to leave a comment below and subscribe because I want to hear about your success story in playing after watching this video. You can pick up Torchlight 3 for $40 on Steam and most consoles. And if you're looking for more accessibility reviews, make sure to visit www.daggersystem.com. That way we can continue to make gaming enabled.